Good evening, everyone. This is Wayne, and this is the video version of the Trade Report for Wednesday, April 11th, 2018. Well, between the announcement that the U.S. would be bombing Syria and the second day in a row of Mark Zuckerberg testifying in front of Congress, and finally, the FOMC meeting minutes being released halfway through the trading day, the market didn't do too badly. Stay tuned to find out more. Uh, greetings again, everyone, and thank you once again for spending part of your day with me as I go over the price action and uh, review the events that took place in the financial markets today. Well, the overnight session is really where the action was, and you can see how it kind of began to droop, then it had a pretty decent little move to the downside, and then it consolidated for a rather considerable period and of course at this point I am just absolutely in slumberland but an overnight announcement that the US would be bombing Syria and yes that was our dear president making that announcement of course kind of took the market by storm and uh, it looked like we might have a rather nasty open to today however the market began to get traction went a little bit sideways, consolidation, and into the open actually began to get bought. Now, right after the market opened, there was a nice push to the upside, met with just a little bit of a pullback, some additional upside action, and then we started to really get sold. And it looked like, okay, well, maybe we're gonna begin revisiting this overnight low. As you can see, we never did that, but then, it was buyers coming back in again, and we really took a nice move to the upside over a period of about an hour and a half. We really moved nicely to the upside, found the top of the value area, and then began to just kind of fall back. And these long tail candles, or long wicked candles as the case may be, tells us that there wasn't a whole lot of volume, and there was a lot of indecision in the market here. And then we got a little bit of selling that came in, but then the market started popping back up and then we just kind of drooped back down into the close. And right now in the extended session, we do have a fairly, a fairly definitive up move occurring, but you know, we never, we never look at that at this juncture and really make any particular decisions or formulate any opinions about it. So at this point, we have two more trading days in this week. Tomorrow, not a lot happening, at least at this point, barring any unknown binary events that might occur between now and tomorrow's session. Never want to discount those binary events. You never know when they're going to happen. They're a tweet away. Um, but on Friday, we have big three banks that are reporting their earnings before the market opens. I mentioned this in the last night's trade report. We've got JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup all reporting their earnings before the open on Friday. If all three of those hit their earnings, the market is going to absolutely go crazy to the upside. And I said it yesterday, I'll say it again today, we could have a thousand point up move in the Dow. All three of those are members, of, excuse me, I don't know if Wells Fargo is or not, JP Morgan and Citigroup are members of the Dow. So we need to be able to look at the market at this point and say, okay, what are the factors that are currently driving this market? And where are we? Where have we been? And where are we most likely to go? Well, given the fact that all three of those events that I mentioned in the intro basically were consolidated in the overnight session and the regular session today. And we did end up mixed today. The Dow closed lower and it never really went green at all during the session. The Dow closed 218 points lower. Um, the S&P closed uh, 15 points lower and the uh, Russell closed higher, almost three and a half points. And the NASDAQ closed, actually the NASDAQ closed lower as well, about 25 points lower. So with the Russell closing a little bit higher, 
Technically, that means we had mixed markets today. But for all intents and purposes, given what the pre-market gave us and all of the events associated with today, we held up very well. So if we look at a daily chart of the market, and you can probably hear my voice going a little bit here, I am going to keep this video a little bit short because I, I'm, well, losing my voice to some degree. You can see how we went higher, came back down, but then kind of recovered into the rest of the day. And so we're kind of holding our own. We're not committing ourselves to doing anything but stabilization. That's a good thing. The market's trading range today was relatively narrow and in comparison to other trading days. And the fact that we're coming up on what can, what can be termed the real beginning to earnings season, which are three big banks earnings pre-market on Friday, gives us cause to pause. And we might have a narrow trading day tomorrow as well. But I think Friday, we're going to move to the upside. I am looking at a market that is ready to go higher. It wanted to go higher today, but that announcement that the US would be bombing Syria kind of took it by storm, kind of took the wind out of its sails, and it still held up very well. That to me is a bullish sign. I still think this market's gonna go higher. I was listening to CNBC uh, toward the close today, and Steve Grasso, who is a floor trader at the New York Stock Exchange, was being interviewed and he said, I still think we're gonna test those February lows. I think there are a lot of traders and market participants out there who still think that is in the cards. It's becoming less and less in the cards all the time. <clears throat> the fact that we aren't getting there is telling me that it's becoming further and further away from happening. It could happen, obviously, but right now, given the fact that we're on the cusp of earnings season, it feels to me like we are, it feels to me like we're going higher, folks. That's just my, my intuitive sense. It's my take on the market and it's my thesis going forward, especially as it relates to being on the cusp of earnings season. The distraction factor, the focus on earnings, will probably keep anything that tries to push this market lower at bay, unless we get a plethora of companies that miss their earnings, which is always possible. But that's less and less likely, or becomes less and less likely with every quarter, because companies usually telegraph what their earnings are going to look like, and analysts are very good at looking at company um, company metrics and being able to express their opinions in the uh, um, in the capacity of the uh, the ratings that they issue and the price targets that they issue for the company's stock. So at this point, everything looks as if the market is going to be predominantly reporting very good earnings for corporate earnings uh, reports. We'll see how that plays out. Obviously, there's never any guarantees. But I'm looking at Friday as being the start to earnings season that's going to put us on a track for higher prices. We'll see how it plays out. All right, so we need to look at Amazon. Amazon looked relatively good today until it didn't. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the end of the day came and Amazon was looking like it really wanted to go higher and then it kind of collapsed again, still within a, a consolidation range still doing okay. Jim Cramer came out and said, Amazon is a buy for what that's worth. Uh, we need to look at Netflix. Netflix did close up $5.60 today. It was up a little bit higher as you can see, but the main thing is it closed above this 618. That is bullish. I think Netflix goes much higher now. We'll see how it plays out as we get toward its earnings report on Monday after the close. So on Thursday and Friday, as well as the Monday trading session, we'll see if Netflix can get much higher. I'm looking for a move up to 319. JP Morgan came out today and upgraded the stock, giving it a price target of $328 a share. Pretty remarkable move, or pretty remarkable uh, 
uh, price target, if you ask me. Um, I do want to look at Tesla, and uh, just because it's a little on the crazy side. So you can see it's still kind of holding this consolidation. Um, I'm still looking at it to go lower. We'll see if that plays out. I'm not sure. It, it was in the green today. It was in the red today. It ended up uh, $3.70 lower uh, than yesterday's close. So we'll see what happens. And finally, I do want to look again, as always, at the VIX. And uh, the VIX actually closed in the red today, down about 23 cents. It did, and I think it put in an 18 print. As I recall, um, I mentioned last night in the trade report, see our low was, actually the low was 1964. So we never did get an 18 print out of the, uh, out of the VIX. And again, I think this is all about the announcement that the US would be bombing Syria. It's really hard to get a market to relax when you're talking about acts of war. So in the great scheme of things, the VIX, closing lower and actually going below 20 today in light of everything that the market had to endure, that's actually quite bullish. So we may be on our way. We're setting the stage for moving higher. We'll have to see what, what plays out. Now, the one thing I do want to show you um, that I meant to show you on the Amazon chart is... I've talked to all of you about how these parabolic SAR dots, when they're above the stock is bearish, and when they're below the stock is bullish. We got our first parabolic SAR dot below price today in Amazon. That's bullish. So I am looking for Amazon to move higher, and I'm looking for a 1500 print in Amazon. Not necessarily tomorrow, not necessarily Friday, but definitely before its earnings report. And its earnings report is on, let's get that, uh, 426, April 26th. So two weeks from tomorrow is when Amazon reports. And there's a lot of big tech companies reporting that week as well. Apple and Google and Facebook. So we'll just... Well, it's not that far away, but then again, it's a long way away. So with that, I'm going to uh, save the rest of my voice and say, trade safe, trade what you see, if you choose to trade at all. Good night and good trading.